to talk a little bit about PR and how it's changed over the past 15 to 20 years. Um, and you're, you're looking at PR nationally as well as internationally um, with, with your work. Um, so what are the changes that you've observed in the practice of corporate PR, um, and specifically at, at Procter & Gamble, but also what have you observed on your travels throughout the world? Well, if you uh, go back in history, the what they called the Public Relations Division started at Procter and Gamble in 1949, and in the in the founding recommendation for our work, it talked about the purpose being to ensure that the company acts in ways that will earn the public trust and that the public knows of the company's actions to earn their trust. And I really liked in that founding recommendation the fact that the first focus was on actions and behaviors that earn trust because that's really what it has always been about at P&G. Um, over uh, about 40 years, we were largely a reactive public relations and issues management organization. And then in the late 80s and early 90s, we really began the practice of brand public relations in a big way. Uh, it was still, I would say, kind of an afterthought. It wasn't core to the marketing plan. It was top spin. Uh, but it was beginning to be taken up by our brands. Uh, and at the same time, I think the leadership of the company was beginning to appreciate that we had to have more of a public face for the company as things like the environmental issue or animal testing became more important in the early 90s. In 2000, we did a major redesign of how we do our work and brought together all of the externally facing capabilities in the company. So not only was this public relations and communications, but also the technical external relations that had previously been housed in R&D, uh, some of the legal work that was done, particularly in the regulatory area, uh, all of our professional relations, consumer relations, government relations, were all brought together in one function that we now call external relations. So it brought together over 1,200 people around the world that were doing externally facing, externally influencing work. And our mission is to develop superior influencer relationships to help build and protect the business and reputation of P&G and its brands. And that's really our, our centering focus, and we do that with five disciplines with brand PR, uh, regulatory and technical relations, corporate reputation, government relations, and consumer relations. So that's where we are today. And it's been, it's been a really exciting journey, especially over the past 20 years or so, because we've gone from order takers, you know, people who kind of get called in at the last minute to take some notes on what the press release ought to say, to true business partners and the relationships with influencers that we're able to bring into the company are the source of what we call commercial innovation, which is uh, marketing, big marketing ideas that are then uh, deployed throughout the marketing mix. So it's not just a PR program, but it can be the center of an entire brand marketing program. Uh, you know, an example might be uh, our Don Ducks uh, uh, program is Dawn to help clean animals who have been affected by something like an oil spill. Well, that's not just the PR program. It's a customer program, a retail customer program with merchandising in stores, advertising uh, on television and in print and radio. So it's throughout the marketing mix. And that was an external relations idea that we brought in and became the center of a total marketing program. And that's what we really aspire to do now, is to be an edge for the company through influencer relationships so that we're 
not only protecting the company, as we always have with issues and crises management, but we're a real business building force as well. So that's the, tr that's the journey we've been on, and it's been really exciting to be a part of it.